Hi everybody. Welcome to day three of the breakaway roping challenge. This has been awesome. I want to just say it has been an extremely awesome three days, two days of getting to talk breakaway roping with you guys and the, what you guys have been sharing. Um, yesterday, we first day, we talked about our body and proprioception, and, and if anybody has any questions about that, let me know. Day two, yesterday, we talked about tip control, and I showed you a drill that I do, and then I left a link to an email um, vlog that I've done, I guess it would be called a vlog, um, about the different types of dummies, and in that video, I talked about the difference between using different roping dummies and why. And somebody messaged me this morning and was, I'm using this when I don't want to do, do X, Y, or Z. And I think, going back to yesterday a little bit, you should just know, it doesn't matter if you rope the dirt or a dirt clod or a bucket. Um, it doesn't matter what you rope, just know why you're roping it. Um, and it's more important that you're swinging your rope every day than what you're roping. It's just the technology is really cool. And we now have GTSs, we have the next dummies, and um, is it Charlie Calf? The body with the head calf stuck up. That's the only one I would probably say do not use. And I don't think it's called Charlie. No, Charlie is the black one. Charlies are just hard to rope because they're really hard. But there is a bigger bodied one that its head sticks up in the air. And um, just that one is, yeah, don't use that one. But uh, you're probably better off roping a bucket than roping that one. But um, anyway, it doesn't matter what your rope as long as you're swinging your rope. So I kind of got off on a tangent on that. Um, oh, I know what I was going to say. Um, Nicole also under that post shared some really cool videos of three different things, um, variations about tip control and what she um, does for that. So that is super cool. Um, I'd go watch those videos. Thank you so much for sharing those. And if you guys have other ideas or anything, share those. Um, today we're going to, the last day, the third day, or let me st stop. We're going to do one more live video tomorrow, kind of as a wrap up, kind of a bonus day. And I want to hear your guys' feedbacks and everything. And just how I want to take this group from here. I'm a little undecided, but anyway, day three, the mental piece of it. This is going to be a shorter video. I did additional posts here that I kind of wrote this information out too, but the mental piece of it. I find that the mental piece is the hardest piece for everybody because it's, okay, when we're talking about our body, like physically we can see things, we can touch them. When we're talking about our rope skills, we can look at one person rope and another person rope and we can see the differences. When I'm working on my roping skills, I can take a video and analyze it. Um, when we're talking about the mental aspect, it's more intangible things that it's more about what we feel, um, things like that. Did I ruin my live video? Mm, sorry. Anyway, back to the, so it's something that we can't feel, see, or do. So it's more, ha um, it's something we feel, not something that we can touch. But what I wanted to talk about, our, the mental piece of it, the first piece is is awareness about where we are at with our mental aspect of that and I had kind of an eye-opening thing a couple weeks ago and I read something about self-limiting beliefs and you know you read that you're like oh whatever whatever you know and then it kind of just rolled around in my head and the self-limiting beliefs and I'm like hmm oh I have this self-limiting belief about x y or z and let me put it on a positive one is the self-limiting belief of I've always known my mare was going to be be what I needed at this point in my time in my life. Um, even though it's taken me a long time to get here, I have known that in my heart and I've told her that every day. Um, even though other people or outside sources did not believe that. Um, so that's kind of the opposite of a self-limiting belief. I knew that in my heart. There's many other aspects of things of say how fast I could rope on her or how good she was going to be. I've always had, I've had some to work through a couple of those things recently. So the first thing is awareness of what your self-limiting beliefs are. There's a whole other piece of this, but that's my challenge for you guys is to be aware of your self-limiting beliefs. So I'm just going to throw this question out there 
and there's lots of different ways, but what I find works best for me is to be aware of our thoughts. Because we can't control our thoughts unless we are aware and know what our thoughts are. So, throwing it out there, flatten, um, what is it, flatten egg against the wall or whatever, but what are your self-limiting beliefs surrounding yourself, your roping skills, your horses, your body, any of that stuff. And I challenge you in the next 24 hours just to take your notepad on your cell phone and write all of those down because you need to be aware of them because our brain always wants to be right. And if we kind of even think that in the back of our head, our brain will do the things to make that happen. So we have to be aware of what's limiting us. And it's, our brain is limiting us a lot of the time of what we think, feel about ourselves and our horses and our skills. So throwing that out there, I want you guys to be aware, write it down, and then kind of let me know. And this can be really personal stuff. And there's a lots of ways to, once we identify those beliefs, to change those and work within those. But first we have to be aware. And I think it's really important that you're aware for yourself and for what you're, you think of you and your horse because you guys are a team. So I have hay on me. But anyway, so hopefully that helps you guys. And we'll talk again tomorrow as the last day, the wrap-up day. Thanks. Bye.